here's the takeaway from this, or one of these. Michael Jordan was the highest paid basketball player for two years, two out of 15 seasons. He made $90 million playing basketball, right? Let's equate that to us going out and making commissions from selling houses. He made 1.7 billion in revenue share, right? You guys get that? So our next speaker, a friend I've known for, I don't know, 15 years, known him forever. Uh, we go to NAEA events together. He lives here in Phoenix. He's always been super successful. I remember learning from him how he'd list homes from his office. Never leave his office. Make the sellers come to him, do a presentation, get a signed listing contract at his office two, three, four times a day. I'm like, what a freak of nature. How do you even do that? I was so impressed with Curtis. So of course, they said, make a list. Go to your most influential people. You don't sign up 20 brand new agents. I mean, for sure, we love new agents. But find the most successful that you got. And you think, well, I don't know if I could do it, Brent, I'm new. How about you and I do it? How about you and Gene do it? How about you and Don Hobbs and Allison Gaddy do it? You, you're not alone. It, it's, it's my sister hasn't sold a home in 20 years, but she could have got you to me. And then you could have you could have got Rob Flick or, or Scott Lewis or Gene Frederick or Glenn Sanford or someone on the phone to get to me. I, I would have joined you and you don't even know how to sell a home, but I was doing 100 million a year for two decades. So stop with the insanity of saying, I'm new, got to, I'm new on your forehead, I can't do it, because you can. And so Curtis was at my big whale. I, was, I called him, I was a little nervous, but not too much. And I did the old save me beta test. Curtis, I'm thinking about leaving Keller Williams insane. I need you to stop me. Stop me from doing something stupid. And I meant it. I was pretty happy, corner office, happy, business is cranking, life is good, going to Maui. James, how many golf trips would we go on a year? Three, four golf trips a year? Anyways, three, four. He says six. He's probably right. We were, we were just, life was good. Stupid EXP comes. Got to do this EXP thing. Just kidding. So Curtis decided to look at the model for me, and he was one of the original eight. I wish I'd done 18. Do save me beta test. Do it. And he built a massive business. Help me work on the stage. Mr. Curtis Johnson, everyone, from Phoenix, Arizona. I am excited to be here. So send me some good energy, right? Raise your hand if you're willing to send me some good energy so we can rock like the next like 15 minutes or so. All right, good. So um, a little bit earlier, Actually, it was yesterday in the lobby, I overheard someone talking and said, you know what, I really wish one of the speakers would talk about how to get and increase uh, my listing price. And I just thought, well, that's not where we're at, right? Is about 99% of the trainings in real estate are designed to keep us on the treadmill, just moving faster, right? So that's not what this is, right? This is about trying to get off that treadmill, if you want, to give yourself some options. And this is not about being kinda in. This is not about average growth. This is about elite, or all in elite growth, right? That's what we're looking for, that's what we're doing. So October 11th, 2016, um, did Brent just walk out? Is Brent still here? He just walked out, okay. I got something for him in a, in a minute when he comes up. Um, so October 11th, 2016, what time was that at? From between three to four o'clock, the day before he had called, he said, would you please, um, have you heard about EXP? I said, no. And he goes, well, you know, hey, I'm thinking about going. He just talked about that. Would you at least look at it and listen? And I said, hey, man, I just barely uh, moved my company over. I'm not interested at all, like 0% interested, but I love you and I will listen. Um, he said, hey, that's all you gotta do. And so we got on the phone and he had a three-way call, we went through it, and I was not interested at all. And he went through it, he goes, well, you know, hey, what'd you like about it? And I said, I like it. What I liked about it was I thought it was amazing for you, but not for me. And so we went through, but again, I was not open to it at all. So has Brent changed your life? He's changed mine. I told him, I said, you know what, Brent, here's the reality. You could be handing me gold bricks, right? And so I, I brought uh, uh, Brent, a gold brick, not an actual gold brick, but like a memento to keep by his phone so that anytime somebody says, you know what, I'm not interested, you could be handing me gold bricks to go, you know what, they're still coming anyways. And eventually, what I really should have been doing is I should have been handing him gold bricks for this opportunity. 
um, because we, we talked about the most expensive thing you can own is a closed mind. Did anybody else start with a closed mind the first time you heard about eXp? Anybody? Right? The rest of you lied? Um, that's all right. So I'm going to share just a little bit about how I went from, hey, you know what? This is kind of a great model, but why aren't there more great agents here? Why, aren't, why isn't this taking off? This has been going on for, you know, the company's been around for eight years. Why isn't it the biggest company already? And how I went through and changed my thinking to, you know what, they're all coming, right? How did we go from that? So I'll tell you, so I, I followed, you know, Brent shared this with me, wasn't interested, but he was amazing. He kept in touch with me every couple weeks, we'd talk, and I was like, hey, I'm excited for you. And he's like, oh my gosh, I, I got, you know, my, my revenue share is up to $5,000. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And it was 10,000, it was 20,000. I was like, that's pretty crazy. And I watched this video uh, that Rob Flick did, and he kind of went through, and, and I looked at, you know, uh, you know, Scott and Tracy Lewis, they were going through, they'd been in for a few months, and, and Sheila had been in four months, and Brent for two months, and I went through, and I started looking at these numbers going 297, 156, 121, and I was like, man, that's just crazy stuff. And Brent went through, and he hit 1,000 people. I was like, man, that's like, I, I just can't even think that far out. That's such a huge number. And so we went through and we had these conversations and eventually I got, you know, uh, this is kind of where Brent's numbers were when, when I joined. And I really kind of made the decision when he hit about $30,000 uh, a month. But I was going through is the end of uh, 2017, beginning of 2018, and I was looking at this. And here's what I thought. If you can see that little red circle, that's about where Brent was when he first shared this with me. And uh, at the end of that, that's where I joined when there were 6,000 agents. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's too late. Anybody else think that? Hey, you know what, it's too late, right? Do we hear that all the time right now? We still hear that all the time. So I was going through and uh, I knew I wasn't Brent, I wasn't a great recruiter, I really wasn't even a good recruiter, but I knew that I could meet with people and I could follow the system and I could bring some people over. So I talked to my business partner, uh, Chuck, we went through and we, we figured out, I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do this. Made a big announcement, January 2018, I had my goal. This was my goal, I said, I talked to my, talked to my wife and I said, honey, I wanna do something again. And she's like, yeah, here we go again, right? But she said, I think this is good for you. And I, she said, what's your goal? And I said, well, my target, I wanna get to $5,000 a month, my first year, and then, I'm gonna to get to 10,000 my second year, and then maybe sometime between my third and fifth year, get up to 15,000 a month. I thought that would be pretty good. So I started out, I brought my team of 20 people over, and a, another team came, and a couple other people came, and I was at zero. Has anybody started at zero, like everybody in the room? Like four people, come on, who here started at zero? Right, we all did, we all started at zero. And I went through, and, and I was like, man, you know what, where am I at? <laughs> Brent, I told you I wasn't going to come. You can be handing me gold bricks. I wasn't going to come. So here's a memento for you to think about. And uh, anytime someone tells you no, you can think, you know what, they're all coming. Um, but I, I'd been in just a, a little bit. And I, I'd been in 45 days. And all of a sudden, I logged in one day, and I had some revenue share. I was like, what? That's kind of cool. I'd been with KW for two years, and I made $500 over two years, about 20 bucks a month. So I was like, 110 bucks, we're on. Like, let's get, let's get going. So I'm going to share the power of residual income, right, because it matters. So uh, August of 1984, or actually the summer of 1984, the Olympics were in California. And that's where I grew up. You had Michael Jordan, you had Carl Lewis doing some amazing things there. Um, I grew up, I was, I was a paper boy. And uh, you know, I'd go and I'd fold the papers and I did a, a few businesses first before I went out to the other houses. And one of those was a shoe store. So I went in, uh, I had to go collect the money too, not just deliver the papers. And so I went in and I was waiting for the owner to come in to meet with him to, to get paid. And I was looking at the, the shoes and I was like, man, those are some nice shoes. I was like, you know, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, all kinds of Converse, some killer shoes. And I looked over, and I was like, man, that guy looks a lot like Michael Jordan. 
And I'm like, what is, what is he doing in here? I was like, man, that looks a lot like Michael Jordan. Um, and so I go and I look and I'm like, that's Mike. And I was like, hey, Mike, what are you doing here selling shoes? Like, that's kind of weird, don't you think? You're like, you're, you just barely won a gold medal. You just barely hit the winning shot for the national championship. What are you doing here selling shoes? And he says, man, you see over there, you see Larry Bird and, and uh, Magic Johnson. They're on the wall. Converse already got him. It's already too late. It's already too late for me. I can't, you know, I, I, I talked to them and they, they're not interested. I talked to Adidas. I wanted to go with Adidas. And you know what? They, they said, hey, we're kind of a mess right now. There's this, other, there's this other company, Nike, but they're kind of like a running company. And you know what? I think it's just too late. But also, a friend of the family has offered me a bunch of money just to work here. And, and it gives me kind of security. And, you know, I just kind of, I, I feel like I'm going to go with that. And I said, Mike, you are going to be the greatest basketball player ever. You're going to be the best ever. You can't just stay here and sell shoes. And so we started working together. I took him out, practice shooting and working on his basketball skills. And I was like, you know what, Mike, you're going to be amazing. And he's like, I don't know, man. And I'm like, yeah, you are. You're going to go, you're going to be absolutely incredible. And all of a sudden one day he snapped out of it. And he's like, you know what? I am. I'm going to go and I'm going to be the greatest of all time. And I was like, yeah, you are. And so he goes, you know what? I got drafted by the Bulls. I'm going to sign that contract. I'm going to go do it. I said, yeah, you go do your thing. Right? And so he goes and he's looking at it. He's like, okay, I'm going at this. And uh, Nike wanted to, to bring him up, and he didn't want to talk to Nike. He didn't want to talk to him. He's like, they're a running company, and his mom said, you know what? You're going to go listen, because she understood the power of events and being in person. Do you guys get that? Right? So Michael goes out, starts work, and he says, you know what, Curtis? I goes, I think this is bigger just, than just signing a contract with Nike. I said, what do you mean? He said, well... What if I didn't just get paid a salary? What if I got some revenue share for each shoe sold? I said, well, that would be incredible. So everybody talks about he got paid $500,000 a year as a, as a contract from Nike, but what they don't talk about is he also got revenue share. Hmm, that makes sense. So uh, the Air Jordans come out, $65, and uh, he sent me this shirt. I thought that was nice of him. Um, <clears throat> that's Michael, that's not me, just in case you're wondering. So uh, Michael's out there. And I was like, man, I love those shoes, and, and those are awesome. So some people think this was Spike Lee in these commercials, but like someone, they, they needed a double, right? So um, I, I'm going out, and I'm like, Mike, you're going to be absolutely amazing. You're going you're gonna to absolutely change lives. And they expected to, to make $3 million, and they did $126 million in sales that first year. So here's the takeaway from this, or one of these. Michael Jordan was the highest paid basketball player for two years. Two out of 15 seasons, he made $90 million playing basketball, right? Let's equate that to us going out and making commissions from selling houses. He made $1.7 billion in revenue share, right? You guys get that? $1.7 billion. So when people sit there and start talking about how many houses they're selling, right? That's important. It's part of this. But are they walking away from the biggest thing in all time. Michael Jordan, the richest former athlete, $2.1 you know, billion. But let me ask you the question here. Obviously, I didn't meet Michael in, in the shoe store, but what if, just like he had amnesia, what if you have amnesia? What if you're playing small? What if you are the best recruiter of all time, but you're playing small just hanging out being an average agent? What about that? What about if you're just like, you know what? There's some security and other people, it's too late. The bigger opportunity's gone. What if, you're, what if you're supposed to be better than Gene, right? He's the legend. What if you're the goat? What if, right? And you're just hanging out being average. Look at this. Dave, Gary, and Glenn, right? Uh, Dave Linegar, Remax, became a billionaire through revenue share. He gets paid. Doesn't matter if people are profitable or not, right? Same thing, Gary. Gary gets paid off the top. Doesn't matter if an office is profitable, all right? Glenn, pro uh, through revenue share, right? And he's also giving that back. So... Um, again, in my journey, big changes happen at big events. That's what happens, right? So we went to Jackson Hole uh, about two weeks after I joined the company. Again, my belief was I'm not Brent. I'm going to recruit just a few people, but I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'll be able to do something. And we were at this event, right? Jay, you remember this? It was, it was amazing. It was freezing cold, right? But it was awesome. And we were going over, 
and I think this slide, I think this is from Albie right here, um, is, you know, hey, you can, you can snap out of it in just a second, right? You can go through and you can change your paradigm from, you know what, I'm gonna just go through and sell a few homes to I'm gonna go out and absolutely blow it up. Because what we did, we spent a lot of time and we were looking at all these huge numbers, but what we really lost track of before that was the power of duplication and the things that we could control. We can't control a lot of the growth. And we looked at Rob Flick's numbers and he had 37 people sponsored. He was making a lot, a lot of money. And everyone talks about the 2,862 people he had right there. But what we, we miss is what is the value per front eight, frontline agent? That's where the power is at. We get hung up in these big numbers, but what we really need to be able to control is the smaller number, the thing that we can do every single day, right? And Rob Flick in his video is going through 1,600 agents, but he had, he had recruited 34. That's where the power of this is at, right? He started with four. Uh, he had four the next month, then he went to five and 12, and he ended the year at 22. Right, that's great, but what we, what we look at is, oh my gosh, in a year he did 700. He didn't do 700, he helped duplicate. So I had a target to go out and recruit 100 net agents in three years, right? Did anybody else have like a big, hairy, audacious goal? Where you're like, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go bring these people in. So I had changed my mindset. I decided I was gonna be a great recruiter. I was gonna go out and do it. I was gonna get 100 people, 100 net agents in three years. And I failed miserably. Right? I failed terribly at that. Right now, I've got 59 uh, front, front line agents that are active in the company uh, with that. So again, we're having a competition to see who's recruiter of the year. I am not in the running. Um, 1.5 agents a month. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, Curtis, you're so amazing. I'm like, nope, not very amazing at all, right? 1.5. I think it, almost any other company, if you're a recruiter, you'd be fired. You would be, right? You'd be like, sorry, you just can't stay here at 1.5 agents a month. You need to go, right? Uh, but instead, inside the system, this was, uh, this was just recently, uh, 4,977. Um, and I, I, told, uh, I told James, you know what, here's the deal. If I don't hit 5,000, I'm not gonna come up on stage and, and I guess maybe Gene rounded up, I don't know, to 5,000, right? So we'll go with that. Uh, but that's a lot of money, right? Um, you know, 200,000 200, plus, it's gonna be 300,000 uh, pretty soon. Again, that's life changing. So let me give you a couple, couple uh, key points to go away with right here. Uh, write down the word and, write down the word and. A lot of people talk about the model and I don't wanna discredit the model because the model works. Uh, but what, what is this? What's this logo? Which company is this? Just yell it out. Nike. Nike. Okay, it doesn't say Nike, but you knew, right? What about this? What, what logo is this? Air Jordan, right? So let me just tell you about this. It's not, you know, it's not Nike or Jordan. It's Nike and Jordan that make it powerful. Let me just tell you, it's not EXP. It's not the model or you. It's EXP and you, and I call it your board of directors. When you look and you combine those, that is the secret sauce. When you look at who's, your, who's on your board of directors, right? Have you ever had a board of directors before? I got, I got Gene and Rob and Sheila and Brent and Cliff and Albie and Jay and Mike and Chuck and Angela and myself and then everybody that partners with us. That is a team you can't beat, right? And so what you need to do is if you want to um, attract people, you have to be attractive, right? Um, that's what Jim Rohn said, you have to do that. So even if you're like, hey, not very attractive, what do you need to do? You need to go and you need to find who is on your board of directors that is attractive with that. We've talked about this, it has to duplicate. So let me just ask you with this, if you had 10 clones of yourself, if you had 10 clones of yourself, how would your business be? Would it be amazing? Would, would all 10 be here? Right, what would happen? So hopefully it would be amazing. Right, and they'd be doing the right activities. Have you guys ever heard this before, right? Give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. Has anyone ever heard that before? It's true, it's powerful. They didn't tell you the rest of the story with that. And I'm gonna tell you the rest of the story with that. Is if you're gonna be spending your time in attracting agents, where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your time? And the secret to how I was able to grow a massive organization in just a little over three years is it, um, agent recruiting and duplication is like teaching a dog to fetch. 
Okay, that's kind of weird, Curtis. What are you talking about? Te teaching a dog to fetch? What does that mean? Well, if you're going to teach a dog to fetch, what are you going to do? Right? Has anybody seen an agent like this you're trying to teach to fetch? Right? I know I have. I'm like, come on. Do you know how amazing this is? You're like, yeah, I'm just going to lay here for a little while. Um, so if I'm going to teach a dog to fetch, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the black lab that's running out of the lake with a ball or a stick in his mouth, wagging his tail, going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go chase and, and fetch stuff. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the dog that already wants to do it, right? Go out and recruit recruiters. Go out and find people that already go do this and look for the black labs, right? Is Nolly in the house? Nolly? Oh my God. <laughs> right? Black labs do matter, right? Go out and find the black labs. Go out, stop trying to get people that don't want to do this, right? So here's the rest of the story. Give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. Teach a man to teach a man to fish and you feed generations. You feed generations and that's what we're doing. So you've, you've heard about in the, in the red book is that you need to have three key hires. In this, you need to have three key partners. Three people that you go out and you help them go out and create generals. And that's your job is to go find three people, three black labs that want to blow this up and you help them go out and you help them duplicate and find three more. A lot of people like to get up or just talk in the hallway like, oh, Curtis, I, you know, I've blown it. I've done all this other stuff and I haven't done it right. And I've been here for two years and I only got 10 people and like it's a confessional. I'm like, it's not a confessional. It's not. Put your stake in the ground right now and decide never again. Decide right now that you're going to give yourself the grace to start over, start today, and to start to prepare uh, to have the life that you want. Start now, right? Start with hands shaking and, and voice quaking. But when? Start now. <clears throat> um, when I started, it was a lot of theory. It was a lot of ideas. And it was a lot of, you know, Gene did this. And, uh, wow, people are going to go do this. And people go, well, what about if there's some other knockoff companies out there? Aren't you scared about it? And I'm like, heck no. Are you kidding me? Do you know why I don't care? Do you know, wh do you know why I'm so optimistic about EXP? Because when we started, there was only a few stories. They were good stories. Right, Blockbuster, it was amazing, good stories. But guess what? Look around the room. Right now, we've got thousands of millionaires and billions in net worth with that. So go ahead and stand up right now. Get off your butt, come on, stand up real quick and get loud if it's time for the world to hear your story. Come on! All right, thank you.